Okay, so this is my uh, first YouTube video describing a COVID project that I just recently completed called Windows Seat to the World. Started by uh, designing it in SolidWorks, get an overall idea what it would look like. We had a blanket chest that uh, we wanted to get out of the room. I wanted to hide all the wires going to the new TV and a place to put the Blu-ray player, so uh, I came up with this concept. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll probably let most of the uh, video do the talking, but uh, as we go through this, I'll describe. I started with uh, Canto R300. I got it from Amazon. I believe it was around $110, including shipping. Mounted it uh, 64 inches above the floor. Unfortunately, when I uh, went to put mine in, uh, there was a, a stud, so I didn't have 16 inches between center. So I had to cut that out. I sistered a, a, uh, another stud adjacent to the offending stud, cut away the stud that was preventing the 16-inch centers, and installed the uh, Canto R300. Also have, uh, you'll see some openings left for uh, access to plumbing. I removed the baseboard, uh, 61 inches. Um, accommodates two cabinets. I want to make sure that I had a good flat surface perpendicular to the floor or to the wall and perfectly level so we used a one by two studs, added some boards on the inside so that the perimeter of the edge of the cabinets would be sitting uh, on a sturdy surface. Cabinets were purchased from Lowe's Two of them, unfinished. Later on we'll be putting some MDF side panels so I made the platform a little bit longer. I use two by fours for the what I call the seat uh, frame. You could use uh, two by six if you wanted a deeper seat. I also used the baseboard to hold the cabinets in place and to give it a built-in look. Had a problem with the, uh, the edges or the sides of the cabinets uh, with the MDF I wanted it to look nice so I put in a half inch popular popper panels and had to cover the end grain so I glued a uh, three-quarter by three-quarter inch strip to hide the end grain of the uh, the nice plywood panels. Next I built what I call the wall frame. Of course all the wires and uh, will be hidden behind this frame. I had to create an opening for the, the TV and uh, of course depending on what size TV you use uh, that opening can be larger or smaller. Covered it with uh, quarter inch thick plywood panels. <coughs> you could use underlayment a little bit lighter. One that eventually it will get painted so it matches the uh, adjacent walls. Wanted some columns to hide the uh, the edges of the, the wall frame, so I bought uh, this material from Home Depot. They also have four inch wide and some nice pine premium quality pine boards to create the column, and you can see it here installed. Figured it'd be a good up. We had a 12 foot ceiling, so I figured it'd be a good idea to put some up lighting. So we used a LED tape strip purchased from Lowe's. I wanted to keep the switch uh, low enough so we could turn it on and off. It's a dimmer as well. Had to buy this extension in order to do that, to put the uh, switch where it would be convenient. The switch was immersed in a uh, pocket and sandwiched between the stud and the wall frame. Also put some foil tape on the top to give it a little bit more reflection. I 
used good uh, primer and good cabinet paint. You can see the side panels, uh, put some shim stock just to adjust them and make sure they're in there tight so it looks good. Put the seat on the top and attach the columns, believe it or not, they're held in with a single screw to the wall frame. Next is a, uh, a custom rotary joint that I needed to use uh, in order to get the portrait, the landscape. I work at a machine shop so it was convenient. I was able to design and uh, get these made and uh, modify the Canto faceplate just by adding three holes or four holes, excuse me, and mounting the uh, custom rotary joint. There's three ball plungers that pop in uh, at the uh, landscape and vertical orientation. And you still have the ability to adjust the tilt. So when you're watching the normal TV, you still have all your adjustments. And it looks like it's flush because uh, uh, the columns disguise the fact that the panel's actually raised. Wanted to look like a window, so I found this video online. Fun video to watch and a very easy project. Uh, you need a Craig jig uh, to really make it go smooth. Uh, it went very well. Nice simple design. And it uses a wall cleat. It, you can just lift and pull it off the wall if you need it uh, for some reason to get to the TV. I can actually retract and extend the TV with just opening the, uh, the panels without taking the whole frame off. It's the back side, it's the front side. It's completed project looking straight in. Wanted something that would look different than your typical uh, TV on the wall installation. And I have a 4K camera, so I'll be taking some vertical footage when we go on vacation. Uh, the Sony can read directly off an SD card. So I plug the card reader right behind the TV. You've got plenty of room to put that. You can look at the still photos in the vertical orientation as well. Found this uh, video source from all over the world. Beautiful locations. Uh, I don't know what kind of camera they use, but it's beautiful, uh, high def 4K video. Uh, and also, I, I got the version with just the sounds of nature, uh, but you can get it with music as well. Anyway, that was my COVID project. I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, have fun working on your projects. Thank you.